Hello, thank you for coming back and spending a little time with me. Let me set the scene up before we get started. In this story, this character is about to enter a place where he knows he is going to be searched. So he is not attacking this woman. He is handing his knife to his partner just to avoid any problems. That's about as far as I can go. Just wanted to show you some of my day by day. I decided to take on some comic book work, but I cannot talk about it just yet. I have not gotten permission to divulge any information and I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, this video is not in real time. I sped it up just for the sake of time. But if anybody's interested, I can post the videos on real time if you would like to see them. This one was actually yeah, about an hour and a half for this panel. So I compressed it to about 12 minutes. Actually a little bit less than 12 minutes. But just wanted to show my process. When I started inking many years ago, I was strictly croak wheels and brushes. I used to use a Hunt 102 or a 108. And as, as far as the brushes, it was uh, the Kalinsky series. Oh, I think it was a Zero Princeton. And of course, when it came time to doing any heavy lines, I would sit there and just stroke away till I could make those lines thick enough. And another anchor cued me into the Sharf brushes. I used those for many years and I found them to be really, really good brushes. I was using the 3000 series, number three and number four. You could go from a hairline to a nice thick line. As far as in the ink, I don't use anything special. Pretty much what's available, Dr. PH Martin's Speedball Bombay. I buy them all and I actually mix them to get a nice dark, dark. I like my pages to look almost as if they were printed. So why don't you see me using any brushes while doing this work? I cannot speak for every artist or every comic book artist, professional or independent, whatever you want to call them, but for me, the game has always been speed. I discovered that pens were a lot faster. You don't have to dip them. You don't have to constantly clean them. A great deal of artists that I see online or that I've met at conventions use the uh, Micron pens. I discovered the Copic Multiliners a long time ago. I've had these particular pens for many years I just keep buying refills and changing the nips whenever they, they wear out. Whenever I have time, I like to use my brushes, crow quills. I spent a great deal of time learning how to use them. It's a skill that I don't want to lose. But when it comes to artwork that I got to crank out day in and day out, it's pens. I can get a nice line out of them. I've said it before in previous videos. Uh, there is no bleed to these lines. You actually have to really go out of your way to make them bleed. So it is good for when you're working on curves or working on lines that have to be done in small sections or in sections to achieve the look that you need. It is very easy to, you know, to butt them together without having any bleed or any problems. Not that you can't use white out, but it is nice when, when you don't have to. The brush pen you see me using here is a Pentel color brush. Also refillable. 
I'm a big fan of refills. I'm not trying to tell anybody that this is the only way to achieve speed or get your work done. Whatever works for you. Take a look at the box office artist. He does a lot of work using just Sharpie markers. I know plenty of guys who use regular pens. Uh, if you're planning to keep the work or try to sell it at conventions after your book is done, you know, if you want to have that tangible work sheet of paper with the drawing on it, uh, I recommend using archival ink. It'll last a long time. If you are more interested on scanning, getting it all digital, then pretty much anything will do. Anything that lays a good line for you and that gives you the desired effect is, is what you want to use. If you're going to be scanning the artwork and then just getting rid of whatever's left, then I wouldn't even worry with, with Bristol board or any expensive paper. I've done a lot of work that I knew was digital on regular copy paper using regular pens that I knew were not going to last because once we got done with what we were doing and things were scanned, the actual pencil drawings or ink drawings were just going to be disposed of. I don't want to bore you too much with commentary because if you've made it this far into the video you're more interested on how things are done and the techniques used rather than listening to me talk. If you have any questions go ahead and drop me a line if not leave me a comment below I will try to answer. If you have any questions on materials and things like that I can answer those. Of course there's plenty of resources on the net. I promise for the next video, I will pick a better angle. Looking back on this, I can see how this corner of the panel is distorted. But if you can't tell what it is that I'm doing this, I am inking in a window. Also, with the better angle, you won't get these distorted shots of my hand and knuckles. Looking back at this, I have these gorilla looking knuckles because of the angle of the camera.
we are now getting towards the end of the video. If you saw something that tickled your fancy, just hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to pass the information along, feel free to share it. My name is Rick Bonilla. Thank you for spending a little time with me and have a great day.